on Linux, we have two different options to set up swap space. Now, swap space is virtual RAM. And there are different use cases for it. And I'm assuming that if you've come across this video, you have your own specific need for swap space. So I really won't talk about what you need it for, but I'll just show you my preferred method of setting up swap space. Now, on Linux, again, there are two different options. The first is by setting up a partition dedicated to swapping at installation, right? So when you're installing your system, you will prepare a partition specifically for swap only. Now, the second option, the preferred option for me, is setting up a swap file post-install because you don't have to partition anything. You create the file and you can load it instantly after creation and then just quickly edit your f stab and add it there and you're good to go so anyway let's start this off it's very easy very straightforward so you first run a sudo dd um, input file oops is slash dev slash zero so we need to create uh, a zero file and usually when we do DD, right, we pass in an actual file, right, to write on a USB stick or something like that. So it may look a little bit strange, but this is actually quite nice that you can even do this. We can create this special swap file using DD. We don't really need to use any other tool to do this. But anyway, so then we specify the output file. And then... You can put this anywhere on your root directory. The only important thing is that it's on the root directory. I'm assuming that putting this somewhere else besides root will expose your system or create some vulnerability. I'm not really too sure, but if it's handling processes, putting them into the background, moving things like that, yeah, do you want... Uh, this to be accessible in other places? Probably not. So yeah, I would put this in the root directory. So anywhere on the root directory. I put it at the top of my root directory and I name it swap file. So it's very, very easy. Then we do a BS to specify the bytes. And then this is the important command here, which is the count. So count is how much we want to give uh, the swap file, so how much space we want to give it. Now, if you don't know exactly how much your value in gigabytes is in translating it to megabytes, I would just put this calculator here. It's very easy. We need to use the binary value. So let's say we have 8 gigs or we want 8 gigs. We would just put 8, hit convert, copy this. Okay, go back to our terminal here. Okay, now we can just paste our value there. Then we set the status flag. So we want to see some output as this thing is going. Now I am not going to run this because I already have a swap file running and mine is actually overkill. It's actually 32 gigs and yeah, I really don't need it now that I think about it. But anyway, we need to then set the permissions of the swap file um, like so and this again will be the path to your swap file now after we've done that we just need to run a mk swap you clear and then again wherever our swap file is and then after that, we run the final command to actually activate the swap. So as soon as we run this, the system will begin to use the swap space. And here, we can actually then check by running a free M. And we can see that the swap is running currently. And if we are on a, I guess, traditional desktop, you have some sort of 
system monitor, right? Let's take for example mate because I have mate as a backup desktop here. Uh, let's check out yeah here. We can see that the swap is activated here. And again, this is kind of overkill. I need to yeah, I need to get rid of that. <laughs> but anyway, um the last thing to do is make sure that our swap file is actually mounted on boot, right? So we need to set it in the F stab, right? We want to make sure that at boot it is activated and swapping is being used or done. It's a better way to say it. So anyway, we do a sudo nano slash etc slash F stab. Okay, and then at the end of the file here, we just want to add the path to our swap file. Um, and we say none, swap, default, zero, zero. And then after that, you're good. Your swap file will be loaded each time your system boots. So it's pretty nice. It's neat. It's quick. It's easy. You don't need to partition the drive. Modern SSDs are so fast that swap space is bearable. I remember I first used it on the first P, well, not even PC, it was actually a PS3. That's the first thing that I ran Linux on. And I remember the CPU had only 256 megs of RAM and the GPU had also 256 megs of RAM, but the GPU was locked, right? Because of piracy concerns, right? They locked the GPU out of Linux um, and we could only really use the CPU. But then at one point, Sony released some firmware update and we were able to use the VRAM as swap space. So then at the end you had 512 megs of RAM. So back then it kind of made a difference, right? It was a lot faster than the hard drive, but there are still some use cases for using swap. So I think it might be pretty useful for those looking for the solution. But that's it for this one. If you appreciate the content, you like the Rin wallpaper, the fat fluffy red hamster, please give a like and a sub.